One of the big sea changes that has taken place in the last 10 years has been how companies are collecting data around their customer base. How many of you are familiar with NPS? Net Promoter Score. It is one of the key changes. It has become, within marketing particularly, a very critical way of measuring. It started around 2003, Harvard Business Review article, and there's some very critical pieces to this, but essentially what's evolved over the last 10 years has been a way of measuring a customer's satisfaction, customer loyalty, um, and it predicts to some degree, some of the studies show predictions of that number against future success of that organization in terms of sales. So that's, that's kind of a powerful indicator and a powerful metric that has appeared only about 12 years ago and continues to be a, a key way that companies are now looking at uh, their customer base and measuring that customer base. I find that absolutely fascinating. And it's a very simple one. It's, a, it's basically a Likert scale in which the extreme positive and the extreme negative are the only pieces that are looked at and you subtract the extreme negative from the extreme positive, the percentages, and you get a number that goes from minus 100 to 100. And numbers that are above zero tend to be a positive indicator that the company is moving from a sales point of view in a positive way. So if you had a number of zero, it's kind of an ah. If you had a number like 20, that's pretty darn good. And you start getting into numbers like 40 and you are in fanboy stage and you're correlating that against a pretty rapid growth rate from a sales point of view. Now the reason for mentioning that is what has happened on the HR side, in the recruiting side, in terms of measuring what is the impact of candidates on our recruiting? And NPS has good value. If you asked, for example, candidates, would you refer others? which is the equivalent of the NPS question, which is would you, would you uh, suggest to others, would you encourage others to buy this product? In this case, it's would you refer others to applying for this company? The answer to that question and the extremes of that question give you a real good sense of the health of your candidate experience. Candidates who don't know much or don't really have a sense of this company typically will answer that question not with an extreme, like one. I would go out of my way to discourage other people from applying to this company, not that negative, or not that positive. I'd go out of my way to encourage others to apply. They become an ambassador, right? So what you end up with is a bunch of neutral answers, and they're ignored, because what we're really looking for in that metric is the, is the intensity of the attitude that may translate into some kind of behavior. And if the net of that attitude is toward a positive goal, then you've got a lot of ambassadors, you're building ambassadors out into the space who are telling people, yeah, this is a great company, you should be going to that. Most of the people are eh. But to your point on using NPS as a candidate feedback, don't you think we run a higher risk of having higher detractors in this situation? Because as a candidate, if I get rejected at any stage during the interview process, I have a higher probability of giving a negative feedback as compared to an employee. So I do more than think about it. I do measure it. So right now, within the last year, 200 companies have participated in doing that. Um, and those 200 companies asked their candidates to do that and they got 95,000 of their candidates to do that in September of this past year, October, uh, August and September. So we have that data. And I can tell you that if you got a job and you were hired, you're probably about 20% more positive from an NPS calculation than if you didn't get the job on average. But the dispersion of NPS scores for those 200 companies goes from minus 20 to 80. 
So you got to imagine, you got to wonder, what is it that companies who are getting numbers like 50, 60, 70, and 80 are doing that companies that are doing, that are getting minus 20 numbers are not doing? So we're capturing people pretty much at the point at which they're applying. So we can get information about when they apply and what, is, what are the key indicators that kill them, if you will, to abandon the application and or um, take that application and, go no and they go no further. Some of them are still extraordinarily positive. Some of them are extraordinarily negative. So why is it that people can go through an application and come out with those different responses. And if you collect enough data, I, I can tell you that we can start looking at those ki that kind of statistic and that kind of correlation. Think about your application process. Think about all the questions you ask, and they're very direct. Do you have this? Do you have that? Give me an example of that. And you go through the yes, no's, and all the other kinds of things. What, how many of you end your application by saying, Okay, I've just asked you 40 questions over the last 20 minutes that has taken you to complete this application. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you think bears on you competing for this job? Is there something about your skill, knowledge, and experience that I didn't think to ask you that you think is important to tell me right now that would help you to compete for this job? That's perceived fairness, because we're not talking about what the recruiter needs or the company needs to select, but what the candidate believes is important for them to tell you.